trust, trade, hope. It's all we have left. A plague of reanimated corpses flooded our streets, feasting on the living. Seven years of fear, chaos, and death. Entire burrows burned to the ground. Hooting became a mundane chore, and savagery was the difference between life and something far worse than death. Allegiances were forged. Neighborhoods became fortresses, and upcycling became a key for survival. Repurposing the old, our travel ways have been reborn. Reconnecting disparate communities. Still, despite these new systems, wars continue. Dwindling our numbers while the undead multiply. Yet, we survive. the game yeah so what what before when we were talking before we were working on on more of a scavenging crafting kind of game yeah uh, and that was cool but it wasn't really the essence of Zyle. we we have a, a more experienced uh, team now mm -hmm. uh a lot more dedicated and a lot of fun to work with and and ideas poured forth ideas poured forth <laughs> from the generous goblet of life um yeah, like Phil, when Phil, uh, Phil came on board, you know, and uh, I was talking to him about what we wanted to make the game. Isabel, the uh, co-creator and the co-writer and the art director, was was here too, and I brought her in and said, hey, like, what do you think? She's like, well, the previous version of the game we had, which is kind of like a 2D, uh, three-quarter view type of game, looked nice, but it, she didn't feel it, you know, and Isa is not a gamer, but if, if someone's not a gamer and feels the game... yeah. Then, Onto something. So for her, well, she wasn't feeling it. So we decided to, to work, focus on making the game about what Xyla is about, and that's about the relationships, trying to reconnect with other humans. So, yeah, so the idea was that, you know, let's make this a narrative game and let's make it a turn based RPG that allows us to play around with uh, exploring characters uh, and, um, and the story that goes with them. And we're working with a lot of ideas to kind of. Okay. Um, it's like, I like the idea of, of combining a lot of the stuff I like from other games, like yeah. more than one game. Mm -hmm. like, you can't put out anything you love from other games into one game. I'm like, why not? <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> if it's doable, and, and if there's game designers on board who are professional slash crazy enough to do it with me. Mm -hmm. uh, Nico and Phil are, are a great duo, and, uh, and they've managed to put together some really great ways of, of making these ideas work. So it's a turn-based RPG. Okay. Uh, you start, you create your own character, and the game starts, you're just broken up with your partner. And 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 the thing that's interesting about that is your partner will, will, will depend on what you choose, your gender, sexual preference, uh, ethnicity, um, even dietary preference. That will, that will influence, that will generate your partner, actually. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah, so you just had broken up with your partner. They're the last person in the world you want to be with right now at, on day zero. But you gotta stick with them because, like, that's that's who you have. You have each other. Right. So the game starts like that, and um, and as you go through the, the, the you know trying to survive, you start meeting individuals and you start building a team, mm -hmm. and eventually you will create a community and you go out on missions to come back to kind of reclaim the city block by block, building by building. So right. the game is twofold. You have all these crazy characters with you with all different walks of life and different philosophies and ways of of, of who they are. And you got to balance their chemistry. You got to make sure as a leader that they, everyone gets together, gets well together, because your chemistry is important when you're in combat. Um, if you have good chemistry with another, if one of your crew members has good chemistry with another crew member, they can do combo attacks. Um, 
And then if they do a good comp- if they do a good attack, their con- their, their chemistry increases. But if they do a, a shitty attack, then their chemistry goes down. <laughs> so, and then the chemistry affects you know team morale, and your morale affects uh, how you with the results of how you do your missions. I mean, you'll have decisions to make uh, while you're doing missions. Uh, and then you know you're you're scavenging, you're looking for materials, you're fighting feeders. Uh, of course, you don't call them zombies; they're feeders. Yeah. Uh, you're 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 clearing out territory. You're also negotiating with people you meet or trading with them and stuff like that. So, if you end up killing like a family of five for their food and they're innocent, and you get back to your community, uh, your community's gonna be like, "We just lost all our trade agreements." Mm. Thank you. We're gonna start for the winter. Thanks. Thank you. Appreciate it. Oh no. So you need the, your reputation of your crew uh, affects your uh, your community. And your community itself generates its own reputation and has its own set of morale, uh, and they both they're both symbiotic. So like uh, like if your team is, is is has a good morale and they come back to the town and the town's just been raided and everyone's feeling horrible and a lot of people died, their morale's gonna go down a bit. Um, and then the reputation of your community determines the quality of people that come knocking on your door. So it's like oh okay well we have a flood of people coming to our door but they're all kind of sketchy. Do we take them in? Do we not take them in? So there's a lot of this, there's a lot of decisions to make, it, and everything has consequences. Mm-hmm. Um, and you don't necessarily the, there's no well, I'd ideally like to like to create a game where there's no right or wrong decision, but there always there are always moral choices to make. Right. And and this, the what might seem to be the answer might not necessarily be the answer. Mm-hmm. Um, and violence isn't always the answer. That's for sure. Uh, you might be in a situation where it makes sense to kill all the theaters there, uh-huh. but it might, then again, it might not. So we really want to play with people's minds. <laughs> you really want to, like, you know, toy with the idea of, like, you're out there and, and you might be a good person, but there's just certain things that you might not want to do that right. you might have to. So it's definitely leaning towards, like, a heavily on survival well, yeah, so there's definitely a survival aspect to it for sure. Um, we like it, it's just funny because in the comic book, it's not about survival anymore. We've already kind of won. Now we're trying to. It's not about surviving. It's about thriving at this point. But in the comic, since the comic is a prequel to the to the to the sorry, since the game is a prequel to the comic, there's still survival is still a huge issue, obviously, because it's, it's 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 during the seven years that the story takes place. Okay. So how is it going with the Kickstarter so far? Uh, it's a little slower than I would have liked. Uh-huh. Um, we're, we're, it's, it's, how can I put this? We have awesome stuff. We just haven't, don't have the reach we would like to get. I mean, I think, I think we're, we're still going to get to our goal. Mm-hmm. It's just that um, it, it's a lot slower than I anticipated. And you learn a lot during a Kickstarter. We did one for the, for the comic. Uh-huh. Yeah. In 2013. And, um, you know, we learned a lot of, a lot of things during that campaign. So some of those lessons were learned on this one and on this one, we're learning a lot of new, new stuff. So we're doing our best to apply what we learn uh, as soon as we can to, to, to make it more, uh, you know, to, to make it the, so more people can hear about it, but we've, we've it, just doing it alone. is just so much really cool stuff we've learned about like the type of people who like our game and what they like about it. And so it's, it's, it's been a great experience. Right, and that's that's good to hear. And so I did see that one of the perks of being a backer is that you can become a character in the video game. So yes. I just think I just think that's a super cool perk. Um, could you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, well, I mean, Zyla has always been a participatory uh, project. We've always worked with the with our fans and creating the world. Mm-hmm. Um, like you know, when you ask people. We asked people, like, when we did the comic book, you know, uh, depending on how much they contribute, you get a, 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 pro, a character profile. And, uh, you know, they tell us who they are. And, like, it's like, oh, I want to be a zombie killer. It's like, listen, the story takes place seven years after a zombie apocalypse. <laughs> if you're alive at this point, you're a zombie killer. So we need more than just zombie killers. Like, what, we need doctors. We need, you know, uh, engineers. We're trying to rebuild the world. Right. Mm-hmm. But people have come up with some really cool uh, ideas for their characters. Their strengths and weaknesses. Like my nephew, for example, he his weakness he chose hypoglycemic. I'm like, wow. And he's like, he was ten when he yeah. came up with the idea. I'm like, he's not hypoglycemic at all, but he thought it was a cool weakness. So I was like, wow. So people come up with really great ideas for like the kind of characters they want to be in the world, and that allowed us to create something really interesting 
and um, dynamic. So for the game, we want you know we want to offer the same the same thing, um, and offer people to actually be in the game. And there's different ways of being in the game, like the 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 the, um, the uh, chronicler perk is really cool because like I think it's a chronicler perk. I'm, I'm not even remember my perks by heart. But the, the perk that you can be a character, a uh, playable character, is pretty cool. And it's actually pretty cheap considering what we're offering for other levels. Um, there's one where you can be an NPC that leads an entire group. So we would, like, work with you to design, okay, what's your group about? What, what, are they nomadic? Well, yeah, they're, they're, pro- they're pretty much nomadic. But are they, like, horrible people? Are they good people? What do they use to, what kind of weapons do they have? What's their philosophy? So we would build this entire, like, group based on your design and ideas. So that can be really fun for someone to get into mm-hmm. um so yeah you know and then there's other smaller things people can do we also had a couple contests because not everyone can afford to be a character in the game so we want to make sure mm-hmm. you know we're we're about media representation we're about inclusivity but we're also about accessibility so we want to make sure hey we'll run a few contests do a few raffles and people can have like perks a little larger than than, than normal I think that's really cool, being able to have a chance to get in one of these contests and win yourself a spot in the game. That's really awesome. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it, it allows us to, like, bring our, you know, we want our audience to come along for the ride. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's really cool. I mean, and we get, you know, we get a lot of really great ideas from fans. You know, we do a lot of conventions. We do the Montreal Comic Con every year, twice a year, because they have a mini con. Mm-hmm. We're doing the, the, the uh, Quebec Comic Con on in, towards the end of the month and uh we've done a few a few out of the city we did pax last year pax east so i'd love to go back there and, and just like the you know, enthusiasm and 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 what people love about the project mm-hmm. uh it, it's great to be in touch with people so to bring them into it and be and, and have them be a part of the creative process is, is also a lot of fun mm-hmm. yeah i'm pretty sure a lot of the fans out there really do appreciate that as well so uh, you know i think that all sounds really great um were there any type of game inspirations that you've come across since the last year? Because I know when we last did our interview, we were talking more about the comic, but now since you've been working on the game, have there been any other games that have really inspired you to like take some elements from here or expand on different elements and such from? It's been it's been a bit of, of, of both because like, you know, even in our last iteration, people would go, oh, wow, this is cool. This is like this war of mine. We're like, this war of mine. Let me check the game out, and like that game is is like wow, it's so depressing. <laughs> it's yeah. so depressing. Like you play it, you're like, yeah, okay, this is really cool and deep. Oh, he's depressed. Oh, he's starving. He's sick. Oh, this person's sick, starving, and depressed. And oh, someone shot this dude. Oh, that's sad. Oh, this is like it's never ending depression. But you you want to play it because it's such a beautiful game yeah. and it's poignant because you know. It's it's all about it's not about hey I'm a soldier running around shooting people it's about no no you're caught in the grips of like you know a, a post war or, or a wartime city right. how do you how do you survive with like like nothing you know it's crazy so that game was really really an influence just on the mood and also mm-hmm. like in terms of like you know negotiating with people and trying to figure out how to survive with other humans um, Darkest Dungeon was just like ah. Uh, uh, have you played Darkest Dungeon? No, I haven't. <laughs> it's so good. It's, oh, uh, <laughs> it's it's a game, it's a dungeon crawler, and it's about the stresses of a dungeon crawler. So, like, if a character gets stressed out, they start going crazy and start and saying really horrible things. And the hor- horrible things they say stress out the rest of the crew. Mm-hmm. Or or they'll get they'll get buffs, or they'll get, um, what was the other one? Buffs and, uh, not to forget, but the opposite of buff. I've been a while since I played it, but um, but yeah, you you get you get boosts and you get like you get the opposite, you know. And um, it's a beautifully drawn game, very Mike Mignola styled. Ooh. It's it's Clay, I think, right? The same people who did um, no, it's not Clay. Sorry, the, the same people that did Mark of the Ninja. Oh, okay. I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, I mean, it's Red Hook. That's the name of the studio. Ooh. And and they have the you know we know Mike Mignola. Mm-hmm. It's right, so like this style is very reminiscent of his, and and everything about the game is awesome. So that's been a bit a touchstone. And then when I was describing to Phil what kind of game I wanted to make, he's like XCOM, 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 play XCOM. He didn't say play XCOM. He just he just said XCOM, and I I resisted playing it because I didn't like the name. Yeah. <laughs> I was like XCOM. What the hell is that? And then I played. It, I'm like oh XCOM. So, um, Enemy unknown. That was the one that I started with, and that game is like just beautiful. 
So there's a lot of things from those games that like um, uh, that that the elements from those games that that we we take to heart. Uh-huh. But obviously we have our own twists. There's a lot of really cool things we're playing around with. Like for example, when you when you knock a feeder down, you got to make sure once they're at zero HP, then only then you can kill them. And if you don't get them, if you don't kill them when they're at zero HP, they'll come back up. Okay. Like you have to execute feeders. You know, you you gotta like weaken them and to kill them. Um, and the same thing kind of applies to your character. It's like when you're fighting uh, in turn base, um, they'll get you down to a really low HP, and then once that once you get down to low health, then they'll bite you. And then there's a turn counter. So if you don't get to that teammate in time, they'll turn. You can you can probably uh, help them with an antidote, or um, or if you have a medic, you can do a, a cotter slice. Mm-hmm. A cotter slice is like a heated knife that cuts away the the rot or whatever you want to call it, the infection and like cauterizes you at the same time. Okay. So it's pretty brutal. It's you know, but hey, I mean, if you want to live, that's what you got. That's what you got to deal with. So, um, so yeah, there's there's some really fun, unique uh, gameplay elements to doing a zombie. I don't think there are too many if, if at all. I haven't noticed any uh, turn-based zombie games. Um, I'm sure there's a couple out there. Someone's gonna go, "Yeah, you should try this, man. You didn't try this. You didn't see that, huh?" Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, all right, cool, check it out. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I, I like the prospect of like when you have your your, your the the grid, you know, you as a, as as a human, you can move three spaces in every direction, and then a feeder can only one move in one space because they're slow. Right. Oh. But you might have feeders that are like fresh meat. Fresh meat are the ones who just got bitten or full of adrenaline, and they okay. might have five squares around them and you might only have three so you're in trouble uh if you don't you know think strategically so there's a lot of really cool uh fun gameplay stuff uh based on like some of the influences we had definitely i'm a huge fan of this horror mine so i, I mm-hmm. can't wait i gotta check out these other games as too oh know. yeah and even though it's not at all the same game in any way it was just a beautiful game and it's inspired me to like push my the, the push like you know the envelope in terms of making a quality game Yes. Uh, it's inside. Mm-hmm. Have you played inside? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Oh gosh, that game. <laughs> it's uh, uh, it's just beautiful. Uh, it, it, because it's so little, you don't know anything. There's no words. There's no word. There's no um talking, you know. And it's very, very um primal in that sense. And it's a and it's it's a puzzle platformer. So there's really there's no way for you to learn how to do things unless you just figure it out. I mean, yeah, you can go online and stuff, but yeah. just in the game alone, it's just it's just beautiful. So that game just taught me, okay, well, I guess you really make sure the quality is, is as high as I can get it. You know, I mean, the footage we have now and the gameplay stuff, I mean, we have a demo, but it's just not, we don't want to have people playing it just yet because there's some things about it we, want, we need to, like, keep uh, tuning. Right. Mm-hmm. But um, the gameplay footage now is pretty Raw. I mean, it's pretty early stuff. I mean, what we have in mind is gonna blow. I think it'll blow blow away what we have now already. I mean, and some of the stuff we have now, I'm pretty. I really like, but uh, I'm really excited to see uh, exactly where where it's gonna go. Cause you can, you know, you can you can imagine and you can design stuff, you know. But in the end, when the game is done, it's gonna be something different. That's true. It's you know, there's always beta, alpha, final product, and um. Yeah. Yeah, like. So how is the game development process going for you? Because coming from a comic to a video game, I'm pretty sure that's just like really exciting to come up with new ideas, work with a team that specializes in programming and um, everything else that goes into a video game. So um, just like, how is it for you? Like, how has the process been? It's been really exciting because it made me uh, figure out what the story was before the comic. Like, Isabel and I create the story in the world uh, that happens seven years after. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's based on, on a general idea of what we want, what we imagine would happen in seven years. It's like, okay, after seven years, this is going to be there. People are going to think like that. Um, you know, uh, people are going to use these type of tools and weapons or th- these type of philosophies will exist. And then in, in, in doing the story before the comic, it's, it's something completely different. And it allows me to really uh, play around with different types of groups and, and ways of handling things. And, and dodging Lucasums. Because <laughs> here's the thing. It's like, okay, we all love the original trilogy. And then you had like the prequels. The prequels could have been, I mean, in, in a lot of ways, they are amazing. 
people, mm-hmm. I think, and I read an article and it made a very good point that people slag it a lot more than, than it needs to, than it deserves to be. Right. Um, but just in terms of like story writing, George isn't the strongest writer. No. Uh, and I'm not the only one who says it, so there. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, um, we know what's going to happen. Um, you know, these are the prequels. So make, give us some really, twi- give us some really cool twists and turns. Uh, you know, like, for example, it was cool that Darth Vader made C-3PO. That was a really cool little tweak and turn that no one expected, you know? Yeah. We did a lot more of those. I mean, we needed solid writing, number one. That's just like the icing on the cake. Mm-hmm. But when there's not much, when the cake is like dollar store cake, you want to have really good icing. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So it's just a matter of like, you know, like, and it's interesting now because as I'm writing the, the, as I began writing the story for for the for the game mm-hmm. and, and talking to Isa about like because we're, we're working on issue five, so I was giving her notes uh, about what was happening in the world. She started making links in issue five of what was happening back then, and it's interesting because now we're starting to create pasts that weren't necessarily there mm. um, in the comic to the characters in the game. Like you'll see characters in the game that evolve into something completely different in the comic more than once. Um, the character I cosplay, Bomani, he's pretty uh-huh. constant. He's like he he shows up in the game and he's in the comic. I, I really wanted Bomani to be in the game because he's not a main character in the comic, and I really want to explore a little bit more about his character. So I decided, okay, let's make him part of the team, and then you know, and and we'll see what happens by the time we get to the comic. Um, but yeah, working with with I mean, I've been working with some great people in the scene. I've learned a lot myself in terms of like game design not to say i'm a game designer anyway but i do come up with game, game design ideas and then my game designers will challenge me on them and make sure they, they need to be in the game or and, and the cool thing is is like if my if ideas don't fit in the game i can always use them in the comic or i can use them in any other in blogs or or, or not blogs sorry but like a message wall there's mm-hmm. different ways to get the my ideas out than just from the game so that's it's fun to know that there's alternative routes to to ideas so with this, you know, new game, um, is there anything that you're just super excited for your Zile fans out there to be able to experience? Yeah, man, I, I'm really excited. I'm, uh, it's, there's so many things about it I'm excited about, like seeing how 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 what kind of gameplay comes out of people's experiences because it's gonna be so you know you're gonna have different scenarios where they're meeting different different types of groups. Like, what are the decisions people are going to make? What are the group, how are the, um, how are the communities going to evolve that people come up with? Right. Like, it's, it, there's so much, we, we really want to make, give people as much to play with as they can in terms of like developing their own philosophy and, 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 and how they deal with other communities and how they deal with their own chemistry and stuff. So I'm excited to see how people will tackle those. I'm also excited to see, you know, reaction to like the things we're coming up with um, character-wise and, and world-wise, because, I mean, when you look at the comic book, you'll get a sense of what's going to be in the in the game, but a lot of the things, is this funny, like, um, reverse engineering your ideas? Mm-hmm. Like, looking at the comic book, going, okay, well, in the game, it is actually like this. Like, for example, there's a place called The Port in the comic, and that's where, that's like the hub, that's like the essential hub for everyone, where they they get their safe walls and they get their car gens and they get a lot of their stuff that helps empower their communities. But before it was the hub, before it was the the, um, the port. It used to be like uh, a headquarters for um, headquarters for um, uh, first aid, like a first aid uh, headquarter. Like at, during during like the during the, the early years, we call them. That was like a you know people would go there. It was like a green zone almost. There was a place we have different places called green zones. Where people would were, were, would go to, uh, to if they want to be safe, uh, and obviously I think everything went to hell because it's a zombie story, but mm-hmm. that was like a huge like medical camp during during the during the early years. So that, that evolved into the port. So it'd be interesting to find out how that happens, right. uh, seeing how the collapse of certain communities um, happen. Like if you remember one of the, do you remember the, the print we have with the angel? Yes. Right. So the print has. Uh, the angel is is is, an, is a statue on on a place uh, a very popular place in Montreal. They call it Tam Tams. It's like it's on Sunday. Everyone comes there with the percussion instruments and just play drums in the park all day. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's a very the, the angel like is in front of that spot. So it's become a memorial in our story. And you'll see the names of of the boroughs that that that, that exist. You had Eastboro, Lovnor, 
Westboro, Hochelaga, Villeray, Plateau, Le Sud, and Eastboro and Lenore are crossed out in our story. So it's like, okay, well, what happened to those boroughs? Uh, yeah. I, we might find out in the game what happened to those boroughs. So it's just a lot of fun figuring out like the backstory of what we developed in the comic and seeing it come to life in the game and having people play in it and then also help define it. Because everyone that's a, that plays a game, they're, they're writing their own story. Okay. Zile is a chronicle. The comic book is the last known chronicle of the story of Zile. Uh, so every story that every game that someone plays, every every character they create, that's part of a story. Who has the right story? Whose story is the most accurate? Who's telling the truth? We don't know. That's true. Yeah, I think that's so interesting about it, where you can basically build your own destiny, kind of, you know, <laughs> and just see it kind of like just like unravel and see where it ends up in the comic. And I just think that is such a unique idea like i'm super excited for the game so is there anything else that you want to add about like the game in particular or kickstarter yeah i mean right now like we just we just want to get as many people out there to, to know about it as possible mm -hmm. um spread the word to your friends and family about the game you know we got some great perks uh we love to have people and get involved in uh creating something really cool and um also, I mean, I've been talking about this a lot, and I, I, I can't stress how important it is, but, you know, our company's uh, mandate is, is to represent people of color, women, the LGBTQ community, and other marginalized communities in a non-stereotypical uh, positive light. And it's so important uh, to have more diversity in our, in our media. And I, yes. and I dare say a renaissance is starting, like, you know, with the fact that... Um, I mean, the Black Panther kind of started it. It's funny, even though we had, um, even though we had the Falcon, who is so badass in the MCU, the Falcon is like, wow, it's so cool. And we have, you know, uh, we have uh, War Machine, who's also awesome. I love Don Cheadle. I love his take on Iron, uh, on, on the very few lines he gets. Uh -huh. He really works those lines. It's great. Um, but, like, seeing Black Panther, that was just, like, for black geeks worldwide. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was just epic. Like, all the memes coming out of that, just like, you know, all, all the, yeah, it was just, Black Panther was awesome. And Chadwick Boseman, Chadwick, Chadwick Boseman has had such an incredible ascent in his acting career. I mean, I don't know him before the Jackie Robinson movie, uh -huh. but when you go from Jackie Robinson to James Brown to uh, Black Panther, that's, <laughs> yeah. pretty dope. that's pretty dope. That's pretty. <laughs> so I think, I think there's a, a little renaissance happening in terms of, like, really strong, unapologetic, unapologetically black characters in, mm -hmm. in film uh, and TV. And now with Luke Cage that, that shut down Netflix, I mean, no <laughs> one expected that. I don't think anyone expected that. No. And I, I'm excited to get my teeth, dig my teeth into it, you know? Um, it is so good. I just want to see Storm. I want to see Storm properly represented because she hasn't been rep properly represented yet. It should have been Angela Bassett. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, there's plenty of amazing black actresses out there that could do her, but Holly Berry wasn't the one. No. Uh, no, dis no disrespect to Holly. I just don't think she was Storm. And also, I don't think she was given the room to be Storm. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I haven't seen the new X-Men, so I don't know about that. But <clears throat> all that to say is that diverse games and, 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 and games with people of color, I think, are something people have been wanting and, and thirsting for. Um, and I think uh, I think our time is now to like really make a, an impact, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah. And it, but it's also important to have a diverse team. Uh, you need to have people tell their own stories. I mean, Luke Cage is great, but who are the writers? You know. Yeah. And that's important. Uh, and at the very least, if you don't have black people on your team, consult, consult, consult. Talk to mm -hmm. more than one black person. If you're if you're if you're creating a story that's outside of your lived experience, you need to consult people from those communities about the characters you're creating and not just one person. Because you gotta make sure you, you don't do an all lives matter. <laughs> you, you, can't, you, gotta, you gotta be careful you don't create that weirdly racist NPC or uh, you know what I mean? So it's, it's, or you gotta make sure that, oh, there's no black women in your game and then one guy, the one person of color on your team says you have to have black women in your game so you make them all prostitutes. Yeah, no, you can't oh, do no. that, that can't happen. <laughs> You need to consult. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, so, I know exactly. <laughs> so yeah, I mean that, that's that's something I, I can't stress enough. Oh, and I mean I don't know if you you're planning on switching the order of things, 
Um, but I did, I did forget to mention the bike parts thing, which is, I think, a lot of fun that people will, will dig. I mean, we're not, we're not planning on having a robust crafting system. Like, I mean, ideally, I'd love to have a crafting system like, like Dead Space Three. I mean, that was like Ooh, yeah. <laughs> the most, most awesome crafting system you could get in a game. Mm-hmm. I'm not looking for that level, but I, I do. I mean, actually, one of, some of the perks we have is a create design a weapon and we'll put it in the game and we'll name it after you. So Ooh. there's that. But yeah, we're gonna try to make because like it's all about you know upcycling and creating weapons and, and machinery and stuff out of bike parts. So we're gonna do our best to make people make sure people have a lot of fun creating weapons or 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 uh, or, 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 or have a, a wide range of weapons to choose from in the game uh, that are made out of bikes. And um, I don't know if I mentioned the last episode we talked about, but uh, the soundtrack. Uh, I have a musical background and I know a lot of amazing musicians. And Brian Oliveira is gonna be producing. Uh, and composing with me on this, he did the music for Tearaway, as well as Little Big Planet Three and Papo and Yo from uh, Minority Mean. My, have you played Papo and Yo? I have, yes. Yeah, so you know the deal, right? Oh man, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so he's an amazing composer, really cool guy, and he was excited about the idea of creating instruments made out of bikes for the soundtrack because Ooh. I want the music to be of the world, as if people in the world were making it. And there's a whole philosophy of trying to like not repeat the same mistakes of the old world yeah um a lot of people feel that how we were polluting the planet and our bodies has indirectly led to uh, the zombie apocalypse so we're trying to be stay green and stay away from like what we used to do and plus a lot of the city has been destroyed so uh the bikes are, are everywhere and they're readily available you don't need a lot of skills just a little bit of like ingenuity to, to make a weapon or make a tool and people have started making uh, instruments out of bikes. So for the soundtrack, the the, uh, the instruments will be made out of bike out of bike parts. So that's going to create a really unique sound, and it really plays into the to the whole transmedia aspect of the project. Yeah, that's going to be fantastic. I can't wait to listen to the soundtrack now. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can. There's a there's a, a sample of it on the on the Kickstarter page. There's an early demo of one of the tracks that I composed and played. Wow. On the lithelium. Like you'll see lithelium is a, is a is a bike rim with the guitar strings. Uh-huh. Uh and uh, and yeah, you'll you can see the, the lithelium on the page and you can see you can listen to the track and we got some great people on board are going to be uh, working with us to create music. I'm I'm just super excited about the whole project and as am I. <laughs> <laughs> we're all, we're all pretty happy about it. Like we think it's going to be some really fun stuff happening. So, um, where can we follow you all? Can we follow you on Twitter? Do you have a YouTube, Facebook? Um... You know, it's funny. I, I'm just looking at Twitter right now, and I'm realizing who this guy is. Because it's a guy. Uh-huh. He's, his his Twitter is like they stand on guard, and he you know he retweets our stuff. And then I realized what, from his tweet, oh, you're that dude. Um, because in issue four he goes, this is his tweet. Don't know how I missed it. But I got my throat ripped out in the fourth issue of the Zile series. How about that? I'm strangely dot 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 honored. <laughs> and and he could, and it's funny because I saw his name as a contributor. I was like, oh, he's dead in the comic, but he contributed to the campaign. That's so cool. You know? And that's the weird thing is that like at some point, mo- very a lot of people are gonna die in our story. Uh-huh. And um, and we have a wall of death in our studio. It's basically like all the characters in the story. Um, and uh, you know, and it's weird because it's like, okay, someone has to die now, and we're like, oh, it's this person. Oh, we just we didn't even get to know who they are. Oh, or like, oh, this person has to die. Oh, gruesome, gruesome death. Oh, that's gonna suck. Okay, and then you're drawing it, and I'm drawing it. I'm like, oh, this is like harsh. So it's just funny and weird, you, and and that 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 you're doing all, you're killing all these people off in your story. That and you kind of know a lot of these people because a lot of people who back you in the beginning are friends and family or friends are friends. So it's just kind of funny and weird. <laughs> it's pretty funny. <laughs> but yeah, I know. So I mean, you can reach us on Twitter. Uh, check out. Uh, you know what? I'm really proud of our Instagram we have just because it, there's a lot of variety in the content we put on there. Mm-hmm. Um, and like from the music to art to like just like observations and, and bits and pieces. And, you know, so there's Facebook, uh, our Tumblr is our, fa- our, our web page for now, but just some cool stuff on Tumblr. But yeah, Tumblr, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook are the best places to reach us. 
And of course, you look up Zal Zed apostrophe I S L E on Kickstarter, and you'll find our campaign. And there's a lot of really cool stuff on there that you, that, that isn't anywhere else. Uh, we have in our updates, we're talking about a lot of the things I talked about today, uh, but along with our game designers and other people on the team. So the, check out the updates. I encourage everyone to check them out. I will definitely go ahead and check all of those out. That is all of the questions that I do have. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Talk soon.